Good day grade 10s, welcome to our next lesson in algebraic expressions. We're still looking at factorizing and we're looking at grouping. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is looking at the video on grouping. The reason we're doing this is we're re revising your grade 9 work, which is very, very important. But also remember that this takes practice. So you need to, need to, need to make sure that you understand how to do this. Right, so let us look at this video. We're asked to factor this expression by grouping. Now, they, they mention grouping. We're going to see what grouping is, but we're going to see very quickly that we have to do this thing called grouping because you can't just factor this expression. If you look at these, each of the terms, all but one of them is divisible by 5. So you can't just, you can't just factor out a 5. Uh, not all of them are divisible by either r or s. This is only divisible by r. That's only divisible by s. That's divisible by neither. So there is no common factor across all four of these terms. That's why we have to group them into groups where there are common factors and then see if that simplifies the whole thing. And there is a little bit of an art to recognizing when you can factor by grouping. But they've set this problem up nicely for us. So if you look at, if you look at well, let's look at these first two terms right here. You have a 5rs and a 25r. These two guys clearly have some common factors. They're both divisible by 5. They're both divisible by r. So if I just wanted to, if I just wanted to factor this one out, or if I wanted to rewrite it as a product of two expressions, how could I write it? Well, I could write it as a product of 5r times, what's 5rs divided by 5r? Well, you have an s left over. You just have an s there. Plus, what's 25r divided by 5r? Well, 25 divided by 5 is 5, and r divided by r is just 1. So 25r over 5r is 5. So these first two terms can be factored into these two expressions. And then let's look at the second two terms. Look at these second two terms. Well, they definitely have a common factor. You have a negative 3, or a positive 3, common to both of these. Let's just go with the negative 3. And our goal is really to factor it into a negative 3 times, hopefully, something very similar to s plus 5. And you might already be seeing that it's going to factor into s plus 5. So let's factor out that negative 3. So these two terms can rewrite as negative 3 times, what's negative 3s divided by negative 3? Well, you're just going to have an s left over. You're just going to have an s. And that's what's negative 15 divided by negative 3. Well, that's just positive 5. That is just positive 5. And just like that, we've grouped them, and we're able to factor each of those groups. And then something interesting might pop out at you. And one, you can always verify that you factor this properly by distributing by distributing each of these expressions, distributing the 5r times s plus 5 and the negative 3 times s plus 5, you'll get exactly this. But something maybe jumped out at you just now. You have 5r times s plus 5. Then you have negative 3 times s plus 5. So now this expression, we have two terms instead of four, right? This is one term, this is another term. And they both have s plus 5 as a common factor. So we can now factor out s plus 5. We can now factor out s plus 5. So this whole thing can be rewritten as s plus 5 times, times what? Times 5r, right? If you take 5r times s plus 5 and you factor out the s plus 5, you're just left with the 5r. And then similarly, if you take negative 3 times s plus 5 and you factor out the s plus 5 or divide by s plus 5, you just have a negative 3, just like that. And then we're done. We've factored this expression by grouping. It's s plus 5 times 5r minus 3. You can verify it by multiplying it out. If you distribute the s plus 5 onto each of these, onto each of these terms, you'll get this expression up here. And then if you distribute the 5r over there, you're going to get, you distribute the 3, you're going to get that expression. So this does simplify that, so we have factored it. Right, so now you can see that we've actually done um, quite a good video on that. We've actually watched a very good video. But what you need to realize, grade tens, is you need to practice, practice, practice. So a lot of my students say, oh, they can't see it. They don't see the patterns. They don't see it. But can I just say that you need to practice because the more you do this, the more you see the patterns. Secondly, there's no harm, no foul in trying and trying it once. And then if you didn't get it right, you try it again. Okay, so let's go through a couple of examples. So the first one I want to look at is the 
6ax minus 4by minus 8xb plus 3ay. Okay, so what I tend to do is I try and look first my small numbers. So I see there's a 4by and a 3ay. So if I look at this, I can see that 8 is double 4 and 6 is double 3. So I am just going to try this. I'm going to group 6ax minus 8xb plus 3ay minus 4by. But what you need to understand grade tens is that again if this doesn't work out it's no big deal we'll try again. Secondly just because I group like this doesn't mean that if you group it in a slightly different way that it might not come out to the same answer. It might just get there in a different way. Right so now let's look at this first bracket. If we look at this first bracket do you see we can take out a common factor of 2 and we can take out a common factor of x and if we do that do you see that we end up with 3a minus 4b which is excellent because then I see here that we've got a 3a and a 4b over here so now we look at this bracket and if we look at this bracket we can see we can take out a common factor of y so if I take out a common factor of y what am I left with? I'm left with 3a minus 4 B, which is super exciting because that means that these are common factors. Remember I said to you that a bracket is effectively the same thing as one whole number or entity, so you can think of it as one whole thing. So we can take out a common factor of 3a minus 4b and what are we left with? We're left with 2x plus y. Okay, And that's it, we're done. Not too bad, hey. Now let's look at this one. This one is a little bit more complicated, um, but we're going to try baby steps. So again, grade tens. If you can't see the final answer just as you're about to start, it doesn't matter. Just try, and as you go through, maybe it'll come out. So let's have a look at this. I'm seeing an x squared minus a 4y squared. I see that's a perfect square, that's a perfect square, and there's a minus sign between them. So I'm thinking that I might be able to factorize that further. So I'm going to group with that. I'm going to go x squared minus 4y squared and then I'm going to group these two together but when I do I take out my minus which means it becomes 2x minus 4y because we're going to minus into plus gives you a minus. Right now that we've finished our grouping let's see if we can factorize this a little bit further. So you can see that this is dots difference of two squares this becomes x minus 2y x plus 2y and then I can take out a common factor here of what? It's 2x minus 4y. Do you see that 2 can be taken out as a common factor? So that's 2 and we're left with x minus 2y. And that is fantastic because if you look over here you can see that we've got these beautiful common factors of x minus 2y and then because this is a bracket I'm going to give a nice big square bracket and go x plus 2y that's left and then the minus 2 is left and then again remember I said to you we don't really like this bracket within a bracket so we're just going to write it out nicely without the brackets so it looks pretty okay right let's do one more example now if we look at this it looks a bit scary and your initial temp thing might be to go oh I'll group all the piece together but no remember the grouping generally is two sets or two or a couple of sets whatever in grade 10. Grade 11 gets more complicated. So hmm I don't know what to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try and group them with the first two and the last two. So let's have a look at that. So it becomes P5 minus P4 take out a minus so it becomes P minus 1. Okay, and again I said to you, it doesn't matter if you can't really see where you're going entirely, let's just try it. If it doesn't work, we try again. Okay, so now if we look at P5 minus P4, do you see we've got a common factor of P to the 4? And what am I left with? I'm left with P minus 1. Oh my word, that is amazing. We now have P minus 1 here and P minus 1. So we can take out a common factor of P minus 1 and we're left with p to the 4 minus 1. Right, great. 
Are we finished? No, we are not. Because this here is a difference of two squares. P to the 4 is a perfect square and 1 is a perfect square. So we're left with P minus 1, P squared minus 1, because P squared times 2, I don't know why I did that, is, I mean, P squared times P squared is P to the 4, and then we've got P squared plus 1. Right, are we finished? No, we're not, because this, yeah, again is a perfect square, so it's different to two squares. So you're left with P minus 1. Difference between these two is P minus 1, P plus 1. And then can we factorize this? It is a perfect square, it's P squared, it is a perfect square, it's 1, but there's a plus sign. So the answer is no, we cannot factorize that. Right, that is all we are doing at the moment with grouping. Grade 10s, you need to go and practice, 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 and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.